Hello and welcome to the second instalment of David Charles' World Cup Diary with my friend and colleague Becky Simpson and we are here to discuss England's performance the other night against Italy and also the World Cup so far. So, Becky, England. How did you feel about that performance? I really liked it. I mean, aside from the fact that the result wasn't what we wanted, I felt they played actually really excitingly, um, very attacking. You know, that mistaken goal at the beginning set yeah. the tone. I know, it was like an optical illusion. I noticed that happened in another game as well, where the ball goes into the side netting and it actually appears that it's gone in the net. And they flash goal. Yeah. And all the people I was celebrating with uh, down in Brighton, with the Nicholsons and the like, we all jumped up. Did you? Yeah. And it all cheered. And it was my brother, actually, who said, no, I don't think it was a goal. Did you feel really stupid? Not though? really, no. I loved the, the energy that they played with, but I think there is a yeah, bit of a worry. Stop because you're rocking the... Um, uh, I think there's a bit of a worry about the fact that so many of them cramped, which mm. I think they mentioned in the commentary after. I know, even Fabio Cannavero uh, mentioned that on, uh, on BBC. Yeah. Um, or is it ITV? I can't remember. I think it's BBC. Um, why are they cramping up like that? I don't know. Maybe they, were, they went out there going going for it and that lovely energy we saw at the beginning that they didn't pace themselves well enough so they didn't last the full distance I did wonder I mean I know Roy has Roy. to Roy has to consider um, keeping the appropriate subs mm. but I did wonder whether he you know saying to a couple of players that you're definitely coming off at this time give it your all but saying to other players you've got to reserve some energy I reckon the reason why they cramped up was because they were chasing the ball yeah. I think Italy passed the ball around better didn't yeah. they and they changed Perlo, the pace, it yeah. they slowed it down at times. They did, but England were chasing the Italians a lot with the ball, and Perlo had four times as much possession as Gerard apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, I think, while I think it was a really good performance, yeah. I have to say, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I never at any point thought England were going to win the game, because I thought the Italians' defence were just on top of England all the time, apart from the goal. Yeah. And while Sterling did some great stuff, I never, I never really felt like we were actually going to get the penetration that we needed to score. Mm. I just wondered what you thought about that. Um, I know, I don't agree. I, I think two all would have been a fair sorry, result. Sorry, what did you say? You don't, I don't agree. You don't agree? <laughs> I think oh two all would have God. been a fair result. So, sorry, this is uh, if the they post, they, Italy probably had the edge a bit, but I mean, nobody would have gone if it had been two all. Um, England were lucky. Yeah. Um, and the way that we came back after the first goal mm. uh, was incredibly impressive. And I thought that showed yeah, it was. sterling attitude. Oh, very good. Uh, I see, I see I, what you did. That was a pun, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, how I long thought, did it take you to think of it? It just like, happened on the moment. Was that spontaneous? It was an oh, Really good. Sterling work from England mm. and sterling. But and the, um, you did very well back there. Very well back. That's Becky, I thought Beck. the... Uh, the, the man of the match, though, had to be the enthusiasm of the physio. <laughs> Was there ever a more <laughs> stupid way to get sent home from and the World I Cup? And I heard that it was because he jumped up and landed on a bottle. Yeah, he tripped over a water bottle celebrating the goal. And apparently he's been in England's employment since Glenn Hoddle really? brought him in in 1998. So, if ever, I, I'm so sorry for him, but that has to win the award for the most stupid way ever to get something. However, always looking on the bright side of mm. life, he will always do, do, have a... Do, 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 do. By the way, I'm going to see Monty Python live at the O2 Good. Arena. So. Um, he will always, won't he, have a story? He will always have a story always to tell. A story for dinner uh, parties. The main part of that story will be, and then I was put on a plane on my own, I missed the entire World Cup, I went home, got depressed, started drinking, taking drugs, and my life's never been the same yeah. since. You're no, let's, yeah. not, let's hope that. Let's not yeah. that. Let's not but, that. you know, you did actually send me a text after the match, and you told me that you'd... Because I think, you know, people ought to know that you... Was it, say, where's my money? No, I no, think what it was, it was about um, how you think you should have been playing is of Cahill, <laughs> because actually Cahill played so badly. So I wondered if we, we wanted no, to... No, I didn't, I didn't say he played badly. I wondered badly, if you wanted I? me to put in a call to Woy. <laughs> to Woy, yeah. And see whether he needs a last minute... I am a left-sided... Uh, sorry, a right-sided centre-back. Yeah. Um, I can't even pick on Jagielka for that game. Um, to be honest, I can't massively pick on Johnson for that game, but who, no. can, who can we pick on? You tell me. Baines. He had an absolute That's disaster. That's because I really like Baines. Yeah, my, my main problem with Baines is that um, he was to blame for the cross 
that could drive um, crossed yeah. over to Balotelli. Well, let's go back to your footballing career. Yeah. Because a lot of yeah, people it's don't much know, more interesting to listen to. A lot of people don't know it? that you're a keen football player. Yeah. I mean, playing two or three times a week. And, um, two do... times. I, I'd like to say all three. What are your it's particular two times. skills that you bring to the um, team? I'm rubbish in the air. Yeah. Um, what I'm really good at um, is standing in front of younger players yeah. and looking really menacing. Yeah. So if they have the temerity to run around me, I'm quite good at bringing them down. That, I'd say that's my main skill. I mean, actually, but you in used fact, to play for a well-known team, didn't you, called the Happy Donkey Mondays. League? Yeah, yeah. Mon- no, Monday. no, Happy, Happy Mondays, Mondays. Yeah, yeah, in the Donkey League. And I know yeah. uh, our mutual friend Craig used to be very impressed how often you came Craig down on a, on a Sunday morning, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I used to drive uh, down to Brighton, Brighton every Sunday morning. And you morning. played in defence. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember there was an a occasion, sadly I missed it, but there was an occasion where... Um, Violence involved? No, I wasn't thinking of that one. But there was an occasion where you sort of said to the manager, Craig, in this Donkeys League, um, I'd really like to go up front. Yeah. And when you went up front, um, a little a lovely boy, who's a very good football player called Matty, oh, yeah. he passed you a sitter. What happened? Um... Was that on that really snowy day where the pitch was really oh, I, sort of, pitch was like. I think what happened was there was a terrible blizzard. It was a good ball, but it got held up in in the kind of soggy pitch, and <laughs> I got tackled. So it was due to the pitch, not my complete lack of skill. Okay. But even if it hadn't have been a soggy pitch, I still wouldn't. Maybe scored. Rooney could come up with that sort of excuse. <laughs> well, going back to the matter at hand, um, I saw the USA beat Ghana last night. Yeah. So even if England don't qualify. As I was actually born in America, yeah. um, I can be a complete turncoat and start supporting the Americans. My surname, Skal, is uh, Dutch. Yeah, Skal so in the back also, of the throat. You could, you could I can support, support Holland, Holland. Yeah. which would be a good thing to do at the moment. Yeah. Because Van Persie played extremely well, didn't he? Yeah. Or my wife, who actually prefers Italy mm-hmm. and is of Italian descent mm-hmm. and, and is threatening to make an Italian flag which uh, I've stopped her doing because I said that I'd probably divorce her if she did that. Yeah. Um, but if she's she... not going to make one anyway. <laughs> no. Well, she might do. It but might we... be a way out. <laughs> we are actually going to be in Italy for the, um, for the World the Cup final. final. Where so, uh, in Ischia, which is a lovely little island where they filmed the talented Mr. Going, going back, you, um, yeah. after we did the little recording before, uh, you said to me afterwards that... Are I you going to had... start pointing out things that I've said in the past and haven't come true? No, yet? no, no. I was going to say that you said that my responses were quite girly in particular because I called Roy a grandfather, <laughs> grandfather figure. Grandfather, yeah. Quite, so I want to concentrate on some of the girly things, things to All talk right. about. Yeah, let's talk so about the girly I things. I want to know what you're going to be wearing to watch the match on Thursday. Well, I've given this a lot of thought and because um, I'm watching it in quite a middle class pub, yeah. I don't think a football shirt is appropriate. Right. Mainly because I don't want to um, scare the older generation because we did have a 90 year old woman walk in through the middle of the game, uh, in the England-Italy game. I don't want to look thuggy or in any way working class. Mm-hmm. So you have to work quite hard then. <laughs> I do have to work. <laughs> I have to go against my what I naturally look like, yeah. as opposed to the face of a horsey... Horsey cow. Horsey cow. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to say that. No. Um, but you have been called a horsey I cow in the past, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but you are actually from Crystal Palace. So I am. It doesn't get less horsey than Crystal no, Palace, no. really, does it? Anyway, so what are you going to wear? You're going to wear... I think I'm probably just going to wear like a T-shirt like I've yeah. got here. Maybe, well, pro- hopefully it'll be too hot to wear a jumper. And what about decorating? You're not going to decorate your house or have you decorated um, your house? I've got the England flag, um, the standard England flag hanging over the futon. Yeah. And um, I've got the wall chart, the obligatory wall chart yeah. pinned up on the wall in the front room, mm. um, which Kat's not very happy about because it's going to leave a mark and we'll probably have to redecorate afterwards. Um, so I just think probably t-shirt, generic t-shirt, as opposed to associating it with um, a football team. Okay. What about you? What are you going to wear? Well, I bought a, from a really cheap shop, I bought a little red t-shirt with England across in, in De Monte. Okay. And, and I've been wearing, what, I wore that last time. What do you to promise to sport that next time we do one of these? What, next time we do some training? Yeah, next time we do one of these broadcasts, would you like to okay, wear I'll, that I'll, shirt? I'll, I'll, I'll wear it. And show, show the thousands of people who watch these broadcasts. What I Or what I I'm think wearing. at last count, 47. Mm. Um, so that would be lovely. Yeah. So quick prediction, who's going to win the Uruguay match? Mm. I said quick, because we're running out Go of time. Go on, you say what you think. I think the score's going to be Uruguay 1, England 3. 
and that's quite quite a thing to say, but I really do think we're going to beat them. OK, um, I will go for England, Uruguay too. <laughs> yes, eternal optimists. Eternal optimists. Becky, thank you very much once thank again. You. David Shaw out. Come on, England. <laughs> <laughs>